Welcome to Thrive with Meghan and Harry. We bring you news, views, and commentary about Harry and Meghan. My name is Liv P. So come thrive with me, guys. I hope you're doing well out there. Today, I want to discuss the epitome of sibling rivalry. <laughs> No, I don't. I It's not. <laughs> it's really just the story of a big brother who was supposed to be gracious and, to, you know, to his younger brother. But he decided to go left field with it, basically. That's what it is, I would call it. <laughs> Anyways, um, so we all know the story of Princess Diana and Prince Charles. The betrayals, of course. You know, her untimely passing and tragic very tragic passing at a very young age she was only 36 years old um and the fact that harry and his brother lost their mom you know at the tender ages of 15 and harry was only 12 you know that's how old my daughter is now and i couldn't even imagine you know either way um we all know that story um we also know that charles is with camilla <laughs> the other woman or the well now they're married so you know i guess i have to show a little respect there but the women the woman who pretty much in my opinion was a party to all of the hell that diana went through you know those unhappy days in the palace you know all the stuff she went through you know when she cried she threw herself down the stairs and just went through a very depressing time in that incredibly cold and unfeeling institution that people in the UK seem to think is a normal, warm, caring, cuddly family. <laughs> and I'm like, you can look at them and tell they're not, but you know, that's just me. <sighs> Either way, um, I wanted to talk a bit about Harry and Wills and their relationship or lack thereof in the last couple of years. Now... We all remember when Kate started dating William and all we used to see over the years was Harry standing by his brother and his brother's girlfriend. Whenever anyone asks Harry about Kate, we can go back with photographic and video footage and evidence all the amazing things that Harry said about this Kate woman, this girl, Kate, right? Whether these things be true or not, Harry has always made it his business to make these two, these two people, look good in, you know, in interviews, etc. Right? Harry never had one bad thing to say about either of them. Right? And we all know this. Oh, so, my goodness. But, and you know what? We don't know. We don't know what happened behind closed doors, Right? They could have been manipulating Harry. We don't know. We don't know what the situation is behind the scenes. But in front of in front of everybody, in front of the cameras, he was always, you know, he always said good things about them, both of them. Even to this day, he still does that. And I remember in an interview, Harry saying he's glad to finally have a sister. He was he was talking about Kate. He's finally glad to have a sister, right? Even the last few times that Harry spoke about his brother, he said good things. He said he will always love his brother and that there is just space between them. That's what he said in the, in the last couple of interviews that he did, talking about his brother. He just said, oh, well, there's space and that's it. My point is that throughout the years, all Harry has ever shown us is that he is a loyal, he's a loyal to the, to the people he, or who, who he loves. And he will always say great things about them, even if they are, you know, going through problems, you know, together at the time, even if, you know, he might, he's going to have an issue behind the scenes in front of the cameras. He's always been like the best person that you could ever ask for. Right now, let's flip the script now and discuss the nightmare of a brother that is Prince William. Now. We've always seen that in his teen years, in the teen years, right? The only one we ever saw get into trouble was Harry for some reason, for some strange reason. There was so much footage, you know, cut, um, coverage of Harry and, 
and in the newspapers and Harry drunk and in clubs and all this stuff. That's all we ever saw, right? But somehow, miraculously, we don't have one picture or video evidence of Wills doing any of that stuff for some weird reason. And I wonder why. Because it's well known that William was pretty much going to the same parties as Harry and they were doing the same things. Yeah. And for some reason, there are only pictures of Harry. I wonder why. That honestly tells me, guys, that Harry, <sighs> over the years, Harry was used as a scapegoat for William and his atrocious behavior, in my opinion, right? He's a scapegoat. He was always a scapegoat for, for, for William and just hiding whatever bad things that William did that we never saw. And do you know, do you know what shielding and protection um, of William has created? <laughs> do you know what them hiding William and whatever mistakes he made and never showing us the mistakes he made as a teenager? You know what that did? That has turned him into a full-blown, pathetic, jealous man-child. <laughs> That's all I can call him, sorry. <laughs> you know, he doesn't know how to be happy for his little brother. Um, and they've both been through, and I, I can concede that they've both been through hell together with their, you know, with the loss of their mother at such a young age. And I can concede that to William too, right? But the, pro the problem is, William has been so guarded and protected that I truly believe, right, that they have like inadvertently con created a huge, horrible monster. A bald, diabolical, fuming, enraged, incandescent monster. <laughs> right? Those are all the words that they, you know, <laughs> that they used to, to, um, to describe that uh, William, <laughs> in my opinion. Anyways, um, so the sad thing is, though, it's all showing in the way he looks. <laughs> Do you remember how good looking he was at one point when he was like 18 or whatever? How does somebody lose all their looks and hair by the age of 38 or 39 or whatever he is? I don't even know how old he is. He's probably 39, I guess. <laughs> it is a testament to his inner self, how ugly he, you know, he is on the inside. <laughs> you know what? All the ugly from the inside just spills on out. That's what, it, that's what happens. That's why he's so ugly now. <laughs> Anyways, um... I remember I was watching a documentary a long time ago about Harry, about Harry and um, William. And one of the interviewers, I don't know which woman, I, I, I don't know who it was. I, I think it was that Ingrid Surd woman. Ingrid Surd, I don't know what her hell. I, I could be wrong, but I think it was Ingrid Surd or whatever her name is. She has a really, uh, anyways, weird, weird look, that lady. Anyways, <laughs> so she said in one of the interviews, and I think it was her, um, that, oh, um, oh, oh, Harry, Harry is not nearly as handsome or good looking as William. <laughs> and I bust out laughing after she, after I heard, I, I saw she said that. And I was like, what? <laughs> I guess that has to be really, really long ago <laughs> that she, that she said that because nobody said that since. <laughs> and this was, I think this was obviously, obviously years and years and years ago. <laughs> And I think we can all see for ourselves which which one of the brothers looks have held up. I mean, you know, we can see. We got eyes. I mean, it's just it's just shocking to me the reg the regression of his looks. It's just astonishing, honestly. I mean, he's gonna look like Mr. Burns soon from from The Simpsons. I mean, <laughs> anyways, uh, enough calling around with that. Um, my point being is that William has shown exactly who he is. He couldn't be there for his brother when, when needed. And he didn't show Megan any kind of grace or humility. All you ever hear is that William said to Harry, are you sure about this girl? And, and he also called Megan that woman in a fit of rage, apparently. And this is all in the news. Like we've all seen this in the news, right? That's the stuff that comes out about him talking about Megan, right? Right. So 
And the, the funny thing is, those smart people in his team, right, they seem to think that this makes him look big and bad and important for some reason. And I'm like, really? Is that what you think it does? I think it seriously backfired because all we know is that William is always incandescent with rage. That's all we know about William. Is this the person who you think should be a king? Seriously? Is this who you think should be a king? <laughs> so I'm thinking it's not too king-like to be incandescent. I don't know. <laughs> Especially incandescent with rage. <laughs> All it shows to me is a lack of compassion and humility. And those are the kind of things you actually need in a king, if there's such a thing as a king. <laughs> so anyways, um, so all it shows us is that William, just from his behavior and all the things that comes out in the news about him, William is just a selfish minded person because he has never shown Megan the same grace that Harry showed to Kate. I mean, Harry always sought to protect Kate. And, and to, it seems to me like William is just actively trying to destroy Meghan. And, you know, and now he's trying to destroy Harry as well for some weird reason. I mean, just because Harry didn't listen to him. It seems like that's what it is. You know, um, I'm wondering where this whole thing began. Like, where do you think it began, honestly speaking? Was it when they all were on that stage together? Um, that forum they did, um, when all four of them were there? And Megan, she more than held her own and showed them all out, honestly speaking. She did an amazing job, you know? So, uh, <laughs> you know, even the other Duchess was there. You know, the one they call Mumbles. <laughs> she was there and she talked and she spoke. And still, Megan, whatever Megan said is what made news. <laughs> Mumbles didn't make news, but Megan did. But um, seriously, uh, was it the time when Harry and Megan went on that Oceanic tour? And they came out on the balcony looking amazing as usual to an amazing applause? Was it there? Was it then that the whole thing started or was it before? I tend to think it was before. To be honest, I really think it, it started from the time that Megan was there. She opened her mouth and they realized that she is not an idiot. She is not there just because she wants to be around them. She's there because she loves Harry. She wasn't there because she was interested in that family or interested in anything to do with that family. She was there because she loves Harry. And I think they were a little bit. Uh, what's the word? Ticked off, I guess. That she didn't um, give them what they thought they deserved. I have no idea. I don't know about these people. <laughs> Anyways. What do you think? Were, do you think that Will and Kate really uh, were so jealous that they couldn't take another smart, well, or a smart, beautiful, interesting couple, make, you know, making people. And the funny thing is, Harry and Meghan together, they were just making people who were never interested in the royal family just come out and pay attention to them. What is it with Will and Kate? Like, what's the problem? It just shows me that they just have weak characters, you know, that, you know, even though they're the future queen and the future king consort, weak character people, in my opinion, like the fact that you know, somebody comes along and just because they open their mouth and they have a they have a platform and they speak that, you know, you're going to wilter into the background and get angry and incandescent. Uh, that's just crazy to me. What a brother Will turned out to be. <laughs> so ungracious and disloyal, right? The complete opposite to what Harry has done. And the worst thing is that people who who come out and who like to come out and pretend like have Will and Kate can do no wrong, right? You know, that Catherine the Great thing, you know, that they had going on and all this crap. It's so ridiculous the way that they want to make Kate out to be something that she definitely isn't. And she, 
she just fails and she mumbles her way through it, I guess. <laughs> and they seem disappointed that she's not like Megan or she's not Megan. <laughs> I think that's what it is. And then they also turn around and blame Megan and make her out to be the bad guy. <laughs> you know, it's like, isn't that crazy? I actually have to do another podcast at some point about the way that they have made Megan the beating stick for the posse that likes that, that, that like the other duchess, you know, I, I've mentioned Kate a lot today. Oh, my God. I don't normally do that. Let's say the other duchess. <laughs> it's a lot, people. I don't know. But um, the whole gist of the story is that William has shown us all that he is not gracious like Harry is. He's not fun like Harry is. He's just not what ha- he he just he doesn't have what Harry has. And it's interesting to me that the person they tried to make Harry out to be is in the press is a force. And it's not it's not only it's made Harry stronger, honestly. And just he's just a better person all, all around. He's just a better person because of the things that they have been saying about him, in, you know, through the years. And the funny thing is, William has never once said anything positive about Megan right? And he's actively trying to sabotage her and all this stuff. And why does he have such a problem with Megan? That's why I've been asking myself. Is it because, you know, like I said before, Megan came there, saw what they were, realized that they were just horrible and took her husband back to Montecito with her? I don't know. It's just amazing to me. Um, I don't know. It's just crazy. I just hope that I don't know. I just hope that one day they can figure things out, I guess. I don't know what else to say. (laughs) But I'm definitely going to do another one of these and I'm going to talk about the other lady, the other girl, the other duchess. (laughs) Anyways, um, either way, um, I have to say, I really want to say to um, Lydia Washington, thank you so much. Um, She has been touting my horn for a long time. And she mentioned me in the Sussex Squad podcast last week. And Tina even gave me a mention. I thought that was amazing. My mission has been accomplished, guys. I've been noticed. (laughs) No, I'm just, I'm just joking. <laughs> but um, Lydia actually mentioned me and I thought that was amazing. I can't believe she did that. And I really appreciate it. Um, I hope that I live up to um, the expectation of the channel. And I hope that I can, you know, just do good things with this channel. And, and I really appreciate every time that everybody would, everybody comes out and just supports. And, you know, as I said, right, um, always try to, you know, I just try to do the best I can. And, you know, I appreciate it if you guys like and subscribe and share it. Um, I try to do my best and I hope, you know, one day people will get to see the podcast more. And yeah. Um, and also the Duchess of Success channel. She, she, she did. I I love her channel too, (laughs) to be honest. I think she's so classy, but anyways, maybe it's the accent. I don't know. Maybe it's her accent that has me, but I I really like her channel. But, um, so she had up all of the channels that are positive. And I think that was really nice of her to do that. But, um, you know, she obviously, she doesn't know all the channels and the newer channels she didn't put up. Like, um, she didn't put, she doesn't know my channel that much, I guess. And then there's How Rich People Live. That lady does an okay podcast. And some other, there's some other new ones that are very, uh, they're actually good. And, you know, it's good that we can push them, right? But let's see how it goes and we'll hope for the best. Right, guys? And, um... Thank you so much for joining me today. Remember to like, subscribe, and share. (laughs) I always forget to say that. And um, remember that Megan said this. Well, she said it once, and I always like to repeat it. (laughs) It's not enough to just survive something. That's not the point of life. You've got to thrive. You've got to feel happy. Unquote. So, bye guys, and thank you so much for joining me. And I also want to say hi to Church Nelly. She's always there 
um, Arnold is always there and uh, everybody else who comes out and just and Lydia of course Lydia Washington you're the best um, I just want to say thanks to everybody for trying to get you know get it out there and uh, I really appreciate it I love you guys <laughs> and um, I will talk to you soon have a great one guys bye